What's up guys? Welcome to another guitar lesson. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to read guitar tabs. This is perfect for anyone who's new to guitar, or even if you've been playing for a long time and you've never been sure of what that sign means on guitar tabs. What is that T? or what does full mean? We're gonna go through all of that today. Now I'm gonna be using some software called Guitar Pro. This is how I've learnt to write music. I've learned how to read rhythms, uh, write out tablature, all from using this program. I'll put a link in the description where you can check out the software. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. So in front of you, you can see the Guitar Pro software and I've created a document about understanding guitar tabs and we go through all the different signs that you'll see. So we've got bends, slides, trills, tapping, and so on and so forth. Now let's start from the top. So when you are looking at guitar tabs, you're gonna see something like this. So this, these lines going across, uh, represent the six guitar strings. So we have here, if I click, that is your low E. Then we've got our A string. Then we've got our D string. And that is our G string, B string, and then high E. So that represents all of those uh, strings. Now, if you see zero there, that means an open string. So if I played this, it would sound like this. So that's playing all the strings open. And then when you see them all on top of each other like this, that means you play them all at once. So that's more for chords. So here we've got an example of some chords. We've got an A minor chord, a C, and a couple of power chords. So it would look like this. And then the next one here, and then this power chord, and then this chord here. So we've got A minor, C, G, and D power chord. Don't worry too much about the names, it's more about understanding that when you see them on top of each other, you play them together, and if you see them on their own, like this, that means you play them individually. So it would sound like this. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. The lines going across represent your guitar strings, and if you kind of want to visualize it, you can put your guitar down on your lap, and then the bottom string here, that would be the one closest to your body, and the one here, the high E, would be the one furthest from your body. After a while, you'll get used to looking at it and just knowing what strings you're looking at, but that helped me at first when I was starting to visualize which strings it is. Okay, so let's move on. So like we said earlier, when you see uh, numbers on a string that on their own, you play them individually. Now, we're gonna see some strange signs here. What do these mean? Now this sign means to do a downstroke like this, and we're playing on the low E fifth fret, down. And what this number underneath here means is you're gonna use your first finger with your fretting hand. Not all tabs have this, but it's really handy if they do. I put this on all my tabs to help you guys out. And then the next note is gonna be on the eighth fret of the low E, but this sign here means an upstroke. Even though it's down, it actually means an upstroke. Very odd, I know. So we're playing our, our pinky, because it's the fourth finger. So what numbers are? Your number one means index, two means your middle finger, three means your uh, ring finger, and then four means your pinky. So we're playing the eighth fret on the low E with our pinky. So if we follow that idea, this uh, passage here, would sound like this. So we've got down, up, down, up, down, up. And on the uh, these two here, the five and seven, I'm using my first finger on the A string and my third finger on the seventh fret. And the same on the next string. And when you see this sign here that's uh, overlapping over, that's just to hold that note for another beat here. We're not gonna be talking about rhythms in this video check out uh, that other video I talked about earlier. We're just gonna be talking about how to read guitar tabs and the different signs. Okay, so it would sound like this. 
say down up down up down up so that's really handy knowing your what left hands uh, what left fingers to use and whether to do down and up strokes not all tabs will have this but if they do there's a very good man notating for you okay so next up we've got bends I'm not going to go through all the different kind of bends. I'll do another video about that, but let's go through the basic bends. So this is saying go to the B string and then put your finger on the eighth fret and we're doing a full bend, which means you're going to be bending up a whole step, which means two frets. So if we're on the eighth, we want this eighth fret to sound like this. That's a great way to practice your bends as well. And that's called a full bend. If you want half a bend, you go up a semitone, which is one fret. So you want the bend to sound like that. Um, and if you want, uh, it says two on this one here, that means to go up two whole steps, which is technically uh, four uh, frets. So from here, one, two, three, four. I can't really do that on this guitar, but that's not far, that's not bad. Sometimes you get that in guitar solos, but you're more likely to get that on electric guitar than acoustic. You don't often bend on them, but that's your bends. You can also get pre-bends where you bend before you pick and then release and so on. But we'll go through that in other videos, but that's your bends uh, and that's how you'd see it notated. Next up, we have slides. So we're going to go to the B string and put our finger on the fifth fret. Uh, let's use our first finger. As you'll notice here, it's not telling me what fingers to use, so that's not very useful. Whether to use down and up strokes. Like I said earlier, sometimes tabs don't have that, so you've got to work out yourself what's the best finger position. I'm just going to use my first finger so it's easy for you guys to see. So on the B string, on the fifth fret, we're going to pick that and then slide up to the seventh fret. That's what a slide is. And the next one is to play the seventh fret on the G string and then go down, slide down to the fifth, pick and then slide down. So this passage here all together would sound like this. And let's hear that together. So whenever you've got a slide, the first note you'd pick, then you slide to the next one. It all depends on the timing, but like I said, check out the other videos so you understand timing. Moving on, we've got trills. So you want to go on the fifth fret of the G and we're going to be hammering on. So you're going to play one note and then hammer on as fast as you can to the seventh. And that's called a trill. The next one we're going to do is seven, eight, then eight, 10, and then 10, 12. So all together, that's really tricky, but it sounds like this if you're a good guitarist. A lot easier on electric guitar. So that's your trills. So that's just when you're playing very fast with hammer-on and pull-offs. And we're gonna be getting to hammer-on and pull-offs soon enough. And talking of hammer-on and pull-offs, check this out. So on the B string of the fifth fret, we're gonna do pick down there, and then hammer-on to seventh. And that's called a hammer-on, where you see a H there. So we're going to do 5-7 on the B, 5-7 on the G. Now we're doing the opposite, where we're going to play the 7th, and then lift our finger off to the 5th. So you pick once, and then you go back to the note before. So hammer-ons. A hammer-on is where you hammer onto a note and a pull-off is where you play a note and then let your finger go and you should have a note underneath. And on the computer. So that's your hammer-ons and pull-offs when you see H and P. That's what they stand for. Okay, so now we move on to a bit more advanced stuff. We've got tapping here. So when you see this T with a circle around it, it will look different in some kind of tabs, but that's usually uh, tapping with your left hand or hammering on from nowhere. So that means you're gonna make the sound of note by tapping on the guitar. And then you're gonna hammer on to the seventh fret. You're not using your right hand at all here. 
and then tap with your right hand or your uh, picking hand on the 12th fret. And you're going to do that four times. More of a technique played on electric guitar and it sounds like this. So that's quite cool. So if we've got, so we've got hammer-ons in there and tapping. So the T stands for tapping. So you might get some licks like this. And you'd see T all over the place and hammer-on and pull-offs. Okay, so that's tapping and pull-offs. Next up, this is more for acoustic guitars. So you see all these uh, letters here, P-I-M-A-C. This stands for your right hand fingers. So P is your thumb and uh, I is your index finger, M is your middle finger, A is your ring finger and then C is your pinky. So we've got uh, an A minor chord arpeggiated here so it would sound like this. So we'd use thumb, index, middle, ring, pinky and we'd play that twice. And it'd sound like this by a professional piece of software. So. And that's what they stand for. Next up, we have some dead notes. So this is, whenever you see this, you are going to be putting your left hand over your strings and muting them. So there's no sound. And then these X's mean to use your right hand to create those uh, dead notes. So this particular ribbon would sound like this. Let's put some uh, down, up, down, up, down, up. Oh, no, down, up. Oh no, I've done that wrong. Uh, down, up, down, up, down, up. So this means you'd play all your dead notes on all six strings like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you can also get dead notes between chords. So it sounds something like this. And you only be doing the dead notes on the uh, lower strings. And this happens quite a lot. It's a really cool way to get some dynamics in. Okay. So next up, we have palm muting. So we've got uh, a G power chord here because we've got two notes on top of each other. And what we do is we're going to be placing our palm lightly over our strings, creating this muting sound. So it'd sound like this instead of this. You hear this a lot in punk. Very cool. And you also get it on one string like this. So that is your palm muting. Finally, we've got uh, this wiggly sign up here. And this stands for vibrato. So we're going to be playing on the fifth fret of the G. And we're going to give it a little wiggle like this. And then this would sound like this with the bar one, two, three, four. Now, if there was no vibrato, it'd sound like this. And you can check out my vibrato video up here or link in description where I go through all the different vibratos. So you've kind of got uh, your rock vibrato. You've got your classical where you wiggle side to side. And then you've got your circular. Steve Vai style, but I go through all that up here. Okay, so that's it from me. I hope you learned something from this video. Please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. It really helps support the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more lessons. Um, yeah, that's it from me, guys. I'll see you for another video very soon. Take care, man.